Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Will Edwards, and today we will be talking about how video game music uh, is actually written in a way that reflects the story, narrative, art style, everything um, within a game. Uh, so, you know, what makes video games and their music so special here? Well, being a new entertainment media when compared to other forms, uh, video games have exploded into the public eye. A balance of rich storytelling, challenging but rewarding gameplay, clever puzzles, and characters you can sympathize with are not enough today without a musical soundtrack to tie the package together. A lot of these games are plugged into a program called FMOD, uh, which allows for musical passages and sounds to be triggered by specific events within the game. This means that in some senses, the composition will always be experienced slightly different from player to player, although plausible to play a game twice the exact same way. The first video game with music was Rally X by Namco in 1980. This racing game included music of a continuous loop in the background with a low hum of the race car engine. Step by step, games became more and more complex until eventually music composers were being hired to compose for the video game media. When I think about a puzzle game like the Talus Principle, all of the religious and philosophical topics that bring you through the story, I think about the ethereal, sonic adventure in the soundtrack. The music plays while battling with computer's questions about your trust in Elohim, who Elohim is, why Elohim is sending you through these trials, just to find sigils, and then just to unlock new areas with even more sigils. You can even ascend the tower, which is the game's equivalent of the fruit of the tree in the garden, where you can destroy the simulation you are a part of and be truly free from the experiments made in order to make synthetic life, independent of its creator. The soundtrack has organ, synth, angelic choirs, in moments that truly send chills down your spine when playing. It adds a whole new dimension to the game where the music almost becomes its own character. It's a narrator of sorts, whispering about the tension built between the simulation and its creators. Even to a much more minute scale, the game itself is wide open, set in a sort of paradise. Blue skies, open areas where you can be outside at all times. No roofs, unless inside the different towers. This could be used to describe the music by Dom John Marunovac. It is open and spacious, coated in a serious tone, but oozing with mystery. Persona 5 Royal is another game whose soundtrack became a character itself. The game is a JRPG, a Japanese role-playing game, where you role-play a character wrongly accused of assault on a powerful political figure when trying to intervene on his drunk harassment of a local kid. You find yourself enrolled at Shujin Academy as the bad kid, and you quickly find out you have the ability to go into the metaverse and change the hearts of people within the country, evil people. You can make them good again. The art design, characters, but most importantly, the music drips with style. It is composed by Shoji Meguro, the J-pop music is so stylish, groovy, and catchy that you will find yourself wandering around in your own life singing So choose a color to live by Speaking of life, Persona 5 Royal includes life simulator elements in the game, giving a gameplay loop that is somewhat similar day to day. Well, the music does that the same way. Wake up, go to school, try to make the world a better place, work a job, hang with friends, try not to make your home stay sojourner or angry, go to bed, and do it all over again. Possibly the most famous of all video game soundtracks is The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, composed by Jeremy Sewell. Jeremy Sewell was a prodigy pianist and a composer when growing up. He claims to basically have received the equivalent of a master's degree in music composition by the time he graduated from high school after casually composing symphonic works 
at the age of five. He was told he would need to focus on either piano or composition for a career, and he chose music for video games as his career. One thing led to another, and he became a key composer in the Elder Scrolls series when finally composing for Skyrim. The soundtrack is indisputably one of the best. A full symphonic soundtrack with choral works composed in the game's own languages that work both in English and the tongues of the Dragonborn. It is New Age, symphonic, mystical, Nordic, and vast, just like Skyrim. Okay, okay. I know I could really drag on about this, and I hope I haven't put you to sleep. Unfortunately, my time is drawing short, and I must digress here. But let me know if you want me to continue this. Uh, there are so many genres we can go into, like Hades and roguelites, or, you know, I mean, Pokemon and RPGs on a smaller scale. I mean, gosh, there, there are just so many games. Assassin's Creed's... Valorant, Warhammer, I mean, yeah, literally everything. So just let me know if you want uh, more of this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, thank you for taking your time uh, and listening to this. You know, contrasting three very different games that have musical soundtracks that really drive the story forward. Um, and uh, I hope that as you play more games or maybe even listening to film, I hope that you can sit down and think, what is the music trying to tell me in this moment? What is the music doing to enhance the narrative? And do you think the music itself is its own character within the story? Let me know in the comments section, and uh, I hope you all have a great day.